What's up, gang? I'm Sean, and I make an app called Sofa, which helps you be more intentional with your downtime. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all the new stuff that's coming for iOS 26. And if you don't want to watch like this full video, because I'm going to go into a lot of detail about stuff, right now I'll just kind of tell you all the new stuff that's that's in it, and then you can go get it, and then you can stop watching if you want. Uh, so all the new stuff. So I'm looking off a list here. So first one is Liquid Glass. Uh, so iOS 26 and uh, iPad OS Vision. I mean technically Vision and uh, Mac OS all going to have uh, Liquid Glass. So that is now part of the app. You'll be able to see all that stuff. Uh, for up next, so which is part of the uh, the podcast player and uh, kind of how you like manage podcast episodes. That has a bunch of new updates. So there's bulk editing, there's swipe actions, better indicators for uh, when something is downloaded for offline listening. And uh, it'll actually show you download progress. So like as an episode is downloading, it'll show you how much is downloaded before it gets there. For the podcast player, um, highly requested feature, it now has voice boost uh, and it has trim silence. So if you don't know what those features are, you're probably someone who like maybe doesn't need them or cares about them, which is totally fine. Uh, but for the nerdier nerds who love podcast players and, and those kinds of features, uh, voice boost specifically is one that will, it essentially tries to amplify the voices and and clarify the voices within a podcast episode to make it a little easier to hear when you're in like different listening conditions like think like you know if you're listening in the kitchen while you're cooking or in the shower or driving or something like that so it's there to kind of subtly enhance voices that you're listening to so that's now there and then the last one is manual sorting for everything. So you're, <laughs> this is like a big finally, but you're now finally able to manually sort uh, lists, groups, and items within lists in the pile and stuff like that. So uh, definitely a little bit of like a grab bag update here, but but a lot of like nice quality of life stuff along with the newer iOS stuff. And like I said, uh, all the stuff works across iOS, iPad, uh, Vision, and macOS, so you can get all that stuff. Uh, but that's it. So if that's all you care about hearing and you don't feel like going into the details, you know, you can now click off this video. Uh, but if you're interested, I'm going to go deeper into each part of this and kind of show a little demo of everything to see how it works. Uh, so if you're interested in watching, you know, Keep watching, I guess. First thing I'm gonna go over is liquid glass, which I mean is kind of like everywhere throughout the app. So there's not gonna be like necessarily one specific thing I'm gonna show you. It's kind of in a lot of places. Uh, but you may notice already at the very bottom. So we have the the kind of, uh, it's called the fab, the floating action button. But that big plus button down there and then the mini podcast player, as you can see, has been oh that's a nice little visual bug don't know what happened there look at that that's fun doing it live baby so as you can see the visual uh you know glass effects are are you know happening right there which is nice so you know liquid glass and you know i'll, I'll kind of show you a couple more things so here's like menus um you can see here's the logbook, and we're actually looking like this is actually my library, so you can see all this stuff. Um, you can see the liquid glass. So my approach with liquid glass was pretty minimal. Um, you know, like if I open this menu here, uh, it is really subtly in this view, but it's not like, you know, basically, my approach with liquid glass was to take it in a very, very minimal way where I know there's like the general Chrome of the UI. So like kind of like the buttons and, and search and all that kind of stuff that kind of automatically is going to get this liquid glass stuff because it's using system components. But then I was saying like Sofa has a very robust theming system. So if you actually go into, um, 
themes, there's like all these different themes, right? Tons of different themes and different categories and stuff. There's literally over a hundred themes. And I wanted to make sure that the theming made sense for liquid glass. And one of the major things I had to do was uh, with navigation bars. So navigation bars before were like heavily part of a theme. And some navigation bars were like a wildly different color than the, than the main view and stuff like that. But when I saw the changes to liquid glass back in June, uh, one of the things I immediately noticed, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to really change how nav navigation bars are styled. And you're seeing that here, which is it's, uh, you know, it kind of has this like faded, uh, almost like slightly blurred uh, overlay. So you can see the content going under it and stuff like that. And that's really the approach now for, for iOS with this stuff. So the navigation bars are probably the biggest visual change with the theming system. Um, and then for liquid glass, it was just like, okay, what, what stuff is kind of like on top of the content? Not, not within the content, but what stuff's like on top of it? And this is really guidance from Apple too. So really the main thing was this, the podcast, uh, like the mini player here. So you can see this and then, you know, you can open the full player. You know, I did think, this made me think like, uh, should, I, should I move Sofa to a tab bar design? I've been thinking about this for a really long time and I still might do it, but it's like, I didn't really have the time this summer to really dedicate to it because I'm working on um, some other bigger stuff. But I think the liquid glass imp or additions to Sofa are actually really nice. And as I use liquid glass on the phone, I haven't used it on the Mac yet because I'm not I'm not going to run a beta Mac uh, <laughs> when like I need to get work done. Um, but on my phone, you know, I've been using this for like you know, maybe two months at this point. And I, I like liquid glass. I think it's really nice. I think it adds, at least on the phone, I think it adds a really nice level of playfulness to, um, to the UI and to the whole OS and stuff. I, I think it's really nice. And it's pretty, it's obviously very new. So like, we're all going to figure out the best ways to use it. And I, you know, it's going to evolve over time. That's just, that's definitely going to happen. So, uh, but honestly, overall, I, I kind of like, it. And I think it adds a nice level of playfulness to the UI. Um, I think it works best on the phone so far. I think it's less better on iPad. I haven't used it on the Mac, so I really can't say, um, but so far so good. So yeah, there's liquid glass and, uh, if you're excited about liquid glass, then you'll be able to use it with this. Okay, so let's talk about up next. So up next is where whenever you add a podcast to Sofa, it'll automatically look for new podcast episodes and it'll add them to up next, which is essentially just a, a simple list of like shows that you, you know, are going to listen to, or maybe you want to listen to. You have a lot of options in here. Um, it now shows the downloaded state if it's downloaded. Um, It'll show you the download progress if like you're actually going to download something. And there's just a, a lot of like nice quality of life improvements here. So one of them is like swipe action. So you can archive or skip those uh, or you can add it to your logbook or played. And there are settings uh, in the app where you can change, you know, which actions are here. So if, you know, if skip, if you rather have skip as like the primary one where you kind of pull like that or archive, you can, you can make those changes. That's totally fine. Um, so you're also able to show before you've been able to see, see, uh, the completed episodes, but now if you want to see any episodes that you have skipped, uh, you can do that and it'll show you all the episodes you can, you've skipped and maybe you want to re-listen to them or whatever. Um, so you can do all that stuff. But one of the bigger ones, and honestly, one of the nicer ones, this is this is definitely going to be coming to other parts of the app, but I really wanted to get it right here uh, first, is the ability to select multiple things and then, you know, do bulk actions on them, essentially, right? So 
uh, really simple. Like this is basic stuff, <laughs> but it wasn't there. So, but it's, you know, it's kind of like nice to have, which is, you know, you sh we shouldn't uh, lose sight of just like the little wins that happen along the way. So I think that's a, a nice addition. That now leads us on to the podcast player and the enhanced uh, like audio features as part of this. So now in the podcast player uh, at the bottom here, this used to just be listening speed and you still have those within here so you can change your, your listening speed. But now it also has trim silence and voice boost. And this is also, if you listen to all the stuff via CarPlay, you can also, you know, toggle it in there. But essentially what these features do, so Trim Silence tries to look for um, like prolonged gaps of silence in the audio that you're listening to, and it tries to trim them out. So you essentially get through, a, you know, an episode quicker. Um, and then Voice Boost will look for, not look for, Voice Boost will essentially try to amplify and clarify the voices within an episode so that they are easier to hear and they're more clear in different situations, right? And, you know, I said this at the beginning, but, you know, think of all the different places that you listen to podcasts. You could be on an airplane, you could be in the shower, uh, driving a car, cooking dinner, all types of stuff. And there's, there can be various other noises in those environments. And this uh, voice boost feature just tries to make that a lot, a lot, uh, not a lot clearer, just like subtly clearer so that it's easier to hear and understand what people are saying. Uh, you'll notice this will be, this should be more substantial for podcasts that are maybe not as highly produced. But honestly, like so many podcasts these days are highly produced. So the I feel like the uh, effect may not be as dramatic as maybe it would have been five years ago or ten years ago or something. But uh, but anyway, it is still nice. I've been using it for a while, and I do prefer the the sound of you know I do prefer listening to podcasts with that turned on. So. Uh, but it's there and uh, it's not blocked behind a paywall. All this stuff, basically everything I'm showing you today is part of the free sofa experience. You don't have to pay for any of this stuff. Uh, you can pay for other features, but all of this stuff is free. You don't need to pay for it. All right. So now the last thing is manual sorting. So this has been, uh, let me get rid of that. Manual sorting has been I actually had manual sorting a couple years ago and then I just did a major redesign for like lists and stuff and it was always like a back burner thing I was like oh, I gotta bring that back and then it just it took me like uh, three years <laughs> to get to it but it's here which is really nice uh, so now within a list you'll see these double arrows and then you have the option where you know all the different sorting options that were there before uh, but now you have a manual sorting option now you don't necessarily have to toggle this in this menu you can just start manually sorting stuff but you know it works you just kind of grab something you do your thing and you know it manually sorts and what's really cool is like this will work for any list um, and you'll be able to do that stuff if you have stuff that's pinned you can move stuff between those different sections and stuff and uh, this will also work with groups so you can do manual sorting for groups uh, and it will also work for lists. And if you want, like, what's which, what I think is nice is, say you want groups to be sorted by, you know, A to Z or something like that, but you want the lists within the groups to be manually sorted, you have that option to do those things, which is really cool. So uh, this has been a very, very uh, highly requested feature for a long time. Uh, I literally get emails maybe once a week about this. Um, so this is going to be, I think, a, a very welcome addition to the app, which is good. Okay, so that's all the new stuff that is coming in the iOS 26 update, uh, technically version 4.3. Um, and uh, I, think, I think it's a good update. I'm, I'm very happy with this update because it, it gets at stuff that has been it's not like these big amazing features but it's stuff that makes the app just nicer to use and people have been asking for for a long time uh it also 
you know, with iOS, when iOS 26 was released or announced, I should say, um, you know, I had just started work on the new planner feature, which is not out yet. I've talked about it before in this channel, but you know, it's going to be coming soon. Um, and so most of my summer was working on the planner feature because it's it's a very large feature. And the whole time I'm like, okay, what am I going to do for iOS 26, right? Like there's, there's kind of like the bare minimum stuff that needs to be done to make it feel like it's part of the new OS and, and is part of the new design direction. And then there's stuff that maybe would have been nice to check out, but also things that are you know, I can get to it sometime or I want to see how they flesh out more. And I really came down to like two things where I was like, all right, I have to adopt liquid glass hundred percent. That's like a non-negotiable. And then the next one was the local models, like the AI models, um, on device. And I didn't get any time to play with those. So I, I literally have no opinion about them at this point. I, I don't know how they perform. Um, I But what I've been doing over the summer is uh, thinking about situations and places in the app where it would make sense to have features where like the local uh, models could help and could be beneficial. And there's a few with the planner feature that are coming up, which would be nice. But again, I, I need to test it out. I need to like, there, it's one thing to have an idea for something. It's another thing to, you know, see what the execution's like. Um, and I didn't want to force AI features into something that I, I feel like Sofa is going to have AI features, right? I, I think it's, I think it is inevitable that all software is going to have some level of AI in it, whether it's like, heavy uses or small uses and i want to be i just want to be like extra intentional about how i'm adding that stuff because uh i want it to be i want it to like when you see it and use it i want it to i want it to feel like i that makes sense right i don't want it to feel like a gimmick i don't want it to feel like uh I'm just like hopping on some hype train or something like that because I have used products over the past few years where they went heavy with the AI stuff and it, it kind of gets in the way of the core experience, I think. And maybe, you know, maybe that'll pay off long-term for different things, but, you know, we'll see. And I think me being slower with adopting AI within Sofa is totally fine right? Like the, I don't see, I don't see there being any weird risk to this. Um, but it, it is going to come at some point and, um, it's just a matter of time. So just have to figure out the, the right use cases. And I have a few like, um, kind of sketched out that I, I think makes sense and would be really nice. Um, and would be like genuinely like genuine time savers or just like helpful starting points and stuff like that. So, uh, so we'll get there, but, um, but yeah, so that's it. That's the that's the update, and uh, I'm excited to get it out. And if you've watched this far, thank you. I appreciate that, and uh, enjoy the update. Bye.